Welcome to another Words with Friends. Today, we are seated with Mornay and Etienne Blom from Kingdom Fire Ministries, along with Bonnie Jones. Well, it is so good to have you here in our home, and um, it's just been an awesome time to visit with both of you. And I know you've done some ministry uh, in Moravian Falls recently, yeah. and um, I know your ministry is based out of uh, Cape Town, South Africa. And we had an awesome time when we were there last year. In fact, it was this year. Yeah. Uh, but just wonder if you could share with us today what the Lord has been showing you for um, for the United States since you're here, uh, for the body of Christ, for South Africa. Just share with us, not share with Etienne, what He's been showing you. You know, what word would you give to people today? Yeah. Well, um, we start with, the Lord showed me more about 2015, and in October last year he said, Etienne, it will be the outpouring of my spirit in 2015 that will have a greater impact on the world than the day of Pentecost. And I, my words to the Lord was, Lord, that's a wild statement to make for me out there, and the Lord said, it's wild, but it's the truth. So I believe in the season that we're in now, God is coming to restore our hearts. By restoring, I mean He's realigning our hearts to them. Because it will be the outpouring of His power that He needs to restore on earth, as well as us to restore us in our priesthood, according to the order of Melchizedek, because then we step into kingship as well. And this is all about getting the mind of Christ by restoring our hearts so that we get the heart of the Father to have the mind of Christ. America is in trouble at the moment, but I truly believe there's a new breeze and breath of grace that God has released upon America at the season. So this is a season that the spiritual leaders, church leaders, need to stand up in the kingship, the priesthood, the authority, sons and as brides. Mm -hmm. And it's a season that we not that we don't just talk about God. We need to manifest them. God wants to be revealed. That's the only way that you're gonna change the world is when people start seeing Jesus. And Jesus is gonna manifest where he sees a reflection of himself. So and I believe the thing that's needed in the body of Christ in America is the prophets need to be restored. The prophet's been taken out of governmental positions of influence in the government, and that's part of the problems that America's got. Because America, if you look in the world, probably got the greatest prophets of all times mm -hmm. coming out of America. But they weren't given the platforms and the place in governmental positions to influence. So the prophets, who are true prophets, need to step in with boldness, with might, with power, with authority, and step into governments and start having government meetings influence and restoring because life and restoration can't take place without the voice of the prophets. And I think what God is doing now in the season as well is restoring the, the truth in the world. He, he showed me that He's releasing a spirit of truth. So people are going to be exposed, churches are going to be exposed, government leaders are going to be exposed and removed. Um, basically removed because if we go to John 17 where, where Jesus speaks and said I first sanctify myself with the spirit of truth so that I could sanctify others and that is where we as spiritual leaders need to have the sanctification of our hearts by truth mm -hmm. so God is exposing our hearts to ourselves to align us to the move of God and the great move will start from the 1st of September that's why this time, most people are in the wine press, they're in the fire, they're in the desert. Because it's alignment of heart, the truth of your heart that needs to be revealed and aligned. Now in January 2.12 he said, my cloud will be moving now and will never stop again like in the days of the Israelites. He said, but from the 1st of September, my cloud is going into acceleration. And if your heart is not aligned to my heart, you won't give up. And once you've fallen out of the cloud in the cloud in the season, you will never catch up again. By that, I don't say you're not going to heaven. You'll still go to heaven, but you're not going to be part of the greater glory, the latter rain, the great outpouring. 
So this is a, a restoration season of the priesthood, everything, of Haggai 2, Malachi 2, where God speaks about us, where He restores us, where He says His priesthood is a precious treasure set apart. And that is what He wants us to step into in the season, that to, to show you that you are set apart. You are set apart with the names of God. You walk in the provision of heaven and the season. And He wants to reveal the greater things, the greater measure, the greater miracles, the greater dimension of who He is. And by that is actually revealing our own identities to ourselves. You know, you know when you're saying that about, um, you know, stepping into by September 1st, it's sort of like kind of like a mirror around or something, you know, something spinning, and then that you c there's only a certain time that you can grab on yeah. before it begins to go too fast, and then you know it's gone. Yes, you know, it's too fast and you can't catch it. So. Yes, it's really, it has been a time of like sifting and shifting and really um, cleaning out what's in us that doesn't belong there. That's the way I say it, you know, so it's just, so we're a clean well, a clean place for deposit of the fullness of what he has. For yes. Uh, Mornay, what has the Lord been showing you? He's been speaking a lot to me about what's going to happen this year as well and it started last year but one of the things he's really been keep talking to me about in this season that we're in now is focus and looking at things not in the natural but with the mind of Christ and looking through his eyes and I had a lot of visions of this the outpouring that's coming but in some of my visions I would see the spirit move and it would just jump and skip some people and I started asking the Lord why and we know this is a time of alignment but one of the things that the Lord told me is that a lot of people are going to miss this because they, it's not going to happen the way they expect it to be. And I think a lot of times in the past as well, God's made some amazing moves and so many people miss it because it doesn't look, it's not the way that they expected it to happen or it doesn't look like the way they pictured it. And I think that's something that we really have to be careful for in this move that's coming as well, that we look at it from God's point of view and from out of heavenly places, not what we think it's going to be like or the way we want it to be. but look at the bigger picture in this season and the Lord just warned me a lot of times that Satan's not after your finances or your health or your children at this stage and everywhere we travel you have people asking us like what's going to happen with the financial market, what about the riots, what about the president and all of those th things but the thing that the enemy is really after in this season is your focus. If you can get your focus off what God's busy doing and off of what He's promised you, He's promised His plans and His destiny for your life and He can get it just off of that Then He has the right to steal the rest. He doesn't have to worry about going just off your finances or your health now, He just wants your focus because if He can get your focus off God then He's got you. That's right. So that's really what He's been talking to me about is getting your focus right and making sure that you're not focusing on what's around you but you're looking from heaven's point of view on your life and making sure that you are in line so you can be part of the move. That's good. Has the Lord shown either of you um, anything regarding Israel? Yeah. Um, there'll be a rise up of salvations of the Jews, the Orthodox Jews. Um, and He showed me that already a move started that the Orthodox rabbis are coming to salvation and they're ministering to each other um, with the Holy Spirit, signs, wonders, miracles, everything they're getting together but it's not the season for them yet to step out. So there will be a more, a greater revelation of Jesus that will come into Israel. The Jews will see Jesus as there is a reality. He needs to be put on place. He'll need to become the first love of Israel again, mm -hmm. to be restored on the throne of first love. And we're going to see a great, great, great move and you're going to get a, a, a revival, an outpouring in Israel this year like never before. It's going to start and I believe in the day of, um, uh, let me do your... Passover? Or day, day of Atonement? Are you talking day of Atonement. Day of Atonement. From the Day of Atonement, okay. you're going to see a greater glory, a greater revelation of Jesus stepping into Israel. And then um, 
all the celebrations taking after that. It's just an increase and increase and increase above coming. So do you feel this is the time that the Jew will become jealous of the Gentile? Absolutely. Because the Gentiles, we, the grafted in, whatever, are going to be exploding with the power of the Absolutely. Absolutely. This is when God's going to be revealed in a greater dimension by those who are aligned. They've got to become jealous. Because what, what we need to realize is that we are carriers of the presence of God. Right. And when we manifest the greater things, we, we are manifesting Jesus. And anybody, it doesn't matter what religion you are, where you are, you're going to become jealous of that. We, because we are actually walking like the Holy Spirit. We're walking in His mantle. We carriers of his mantle, mm -hmm. and in his mantle is the fullness of the provision and glory of heaven, and that's going to start to manifest. Well, morning, I have a question for you. Um, what has the Lord shown you, or what have you experienced about um, the Muslim people? How do you minister to them? Personally, I don't. The way I don't. I don't believe that we should just attack them and try and hammer them down or I believe that if we truly manifest Jesus that makes a massive difference as well and I've seen a lot of people that just by showing them Jesus and not preaching to them or telling them they are wrong and just showing them Jesus through our lives and having them encounter his presence as if we take up our positions and release His presence wherever we go and when they're in our presence. I've seen a lot of people where God comes and He touches their hearts and they change around, they swing around because they get, they feel that love of Jesus and yeah, I've seen that really swing a lot of people around, not preaching to them but just truly manifesting and reflecting Jesus. Just really loving them. Yes. Yeah, that's what I, I felt also. I've, I've seen it in our ministries in Pakistan and those places that Muslim nations, you start your sermons or your crusades or whatever with a miracle. Mm -hmm. As soon as you start it by letting the um, paralyzed person stand out of the wheelchair, then they all storm to the front. They want your Jesus. They want to see his alive. Then you don't have to preach nothing. You just show them Jesus. Yeah, yeah. The demonstration. Yeah. The manifest presence yeah. of God. Yeah. That's awesome. What is the, uh, oh, like your greatest creative miracle that you want to, I'll start with you more, Nate, what, what is the like most exciting thing that you've seen? Oh, that's um, a hard one. <laughs> if it's creative, miracle, oh, so we've had in Africa where I've seen a man that had just all the finger where his finger grows out or he gets a new finger, um, something that yeah, for creative miracle, the finger growing out was probably for me personally one of the most amazing things to see. But other miracles, blind people with their eyes are it's just white, and then next moment they have normal blue eyes or whatever color eyes standing in front of you. We've had tumors about the size of a tennis ball in a person's neck, and you just pray for the Holy Spirit to come and burn it away. Next moment there's nothing, and we've seen some amazing things. Now that was in South Africa? No, that was up in Africa and then in the Philippines a lot of miracles as well. Okay. What about you, Eric? Oh my, it's difficult to say. <laughs> well, pick a couple. <laughs> I, I know I've you're... seen resurrections, that God has used us for resurrections. Mm -hmm. And then obviously I'm in July 2010 in Zimbabwe, uh, there's a guy who had no eyeballs, mm -hmm. absolutely no eyeballs. Prayed from the next moment, he was looking and staring at you with new eyes. Isn't that was amazing. Yeah. And other two that are, are two boys, one in um, Zambia and one in Pakistan, that were Down syndrome boys. Mm. And when you prayed for them, they got slain in the spirit. And when they stood up, their faces changed physically and you couldn't even see they were Down syndrome. Mm. And they were restored to absolute perfection. Yeah, we've, yeah. Seen, we've seen many of those things, legs grow, feet grow. Ah. Do you see more taking place in the other countries than you do here in the United States? Yes, I do see it. That we don't see as many of the greater miracles in the first world countries. I don't think the first world countries are in a place of desperation. Right, yes. 
that we've, we think we've got things bad, but not really. We're not desperate yet for God. And those people are so hungry, they're so desperate that you just speak and you just release it and it just happens. Yeah. Yeah. That's a thing. Unfortunate, but that is true. That is true. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about your ministry, Kingdom Fire, in South Africa. And when did you start? And Kingdom, background? Yes, Kingdom Fire Ministries was started in 2007, the second half of 2007 and got registered. It was a name that God gave me one day when I was driving when he called me to full-time ministry, he released a name, registered it, and we started a church, a leg of Kingdom Fire Ministries, which is called Shama, which means God is present, two and a half years ago. Before that, and still now, I'm just traveling the world. We're preaching nations two weeks per month. And we've got a mighty youth group that just stood up now as well, that I believe will influence the world. And we reach out a lot into the community. And because we believe if your church does not influence your community, close your doors. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. Well, I know you are a mighty man men of God and you know I mean you really work walk in faith and power and truth and love and uh, to every everyone that I know that had, who you ministered both of you you know they just are greatly impacted you know by the, the residue you leave behind <laughs> so it's like nothing's ever the same after you leave so I'm just blessed that the Lord sent you to us as our blue quail back in 2010 yeah. and that we've maintained our, our friendship and relationship. And I get to be your mom. That makes me your grandma. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but anyhow, we are just truly blessed that you could be with us today. And I know we could sit here for hours on hour oh, yeah. and just, just continue talking. So, anyhow, thank you again for coming and, and blessing us. Thank you, Bob. Thank you so much. Thank you for blessing us. Amen. Thank you. Amen.